What's up everyone guys, it's and welcome back to another video today with my Backlash 2023 predictions video. Um, and yeah, like, I'm not really too excited for the Backlash, there's nothing really where I'm like dying to see, but I don't know, looking at the card and looking at the matches, I'm like, there's nothing here but I think, like I think everything here has potential to be good. And like I don't really see anything being terrible. So um, yeah, I feel like... I'm not like excited, but I'm not. I don't think it'll be a bad show either. You know, I think the matches, if they deliver, like, could be a good pay per view or premium live event. Um, so yeah, let's kind of get into it. Let's break down the card, give my predictions, and yeah, um, let's start off with the triple threat for the United States Championship: Austin Theory defending against the Almighty Bobby Lashley and Bronson Reed. Personally, I would have liked to have seen Bronson get the win in this match, but after seeing how the draft has played out, with Bronson being the only one of the two to stay on Raw with Bobby and Theory moving to SmackDown and Gunther coming over to Raw with the Intercontinental Championship, I think that means it's basically down to Bobby and Theory. On they have Bronson Reed and they use this to draft them over to Raw, which er, from Raw to SmackDown, which makes no sense because then you just had the draft, so why would you start moving people already? Um. So realistically, that narrows it down to Theory and Lashley. And I think Austin Theory will retain. Uh, I don't know why. I just... I feel like Lashley could be one of the names that could, uh, you know, challenge Roman Reigns at Night of Champions. Maybe, you know, he's one of the few names. Of course, Roman Reigns recently started to be advertised for money in the bank as well. So, like, I feel like we could potentially see a Lashley-Roman feud. It's not in that... It's not one that we have really seen before that I can think of anyway. No other names that people are saying that could go for Roman are like AJ Styles who just came back from injury, which I could see as well. And the stuff they did in 2016 was very good. But um, yeah, I feel like Lashley could potentially go and do stuff with Roman. So I don't really see them putting the US title on him. Um, and with Theory, you know, you have Grayson Hall getting called up. You have LA Knight. I feel like there's some entertaining stuff you could do with them in theory for the US Championship. Um, so yeah, I, I think Theory will retain here. As I said, I would have liked to have seen Bronson get the win. I feel like he, out of everyone, needs to win the US Championship more than anyone. But with him being on a different brand and on the same brand as the Intercon Championship, I just don't see that happening. Uh, next up, we have Seth freaking Rollins versus Omos. Uh match that kind of got announced out of nowhere and they've like had one interaction there's like no mention of each other and each other uh on raw um but it's still being listed as a match that has happened i'm guessing it's just like an attraction match for almost um i feel like it would make more sense to have seth win here especially when being one of the favorites to win the new world heavyweight championship but I also kind of wouldn't be surprised if they did give Omos a win. You know, he did just lose to Brock. He, he's kind of at the stage where he has these squash matches on TV, but then when he gets to the big match at the pay-per-view, he doesn't get the job done. Um, and, uh, and I feel like with them kind of making a big deal about Omos in the draft and saying how MVP negotiated deal for him to kind of be like a free agent and can show up in that everywhere I wouldn't put past WWE to give him the big win here over Seth but I'm going to go with Seth I'm going to go with Seth for my prediction Um, I feel like he is the favourite to win the world championship for a reason and I advise WWE I would want to keep that momentum going into night champions Um, so yeah we're going to go Seth freaking Rollins over almost and I feel like Seth can get a good match out of Omos. Like, I'm not one of those Omos haters. I think he's okay. I don't think he's terrible. And I feel like Seth, if anyone wants to get a great match out of him, it is Seth. And now let's move on to Bianca Belair versus EO Sky for the Smack. Is it? Like, is I, SmackDown Raw Women's Championship? I don't know. Um. I guess maybe hopefully we find out on SmackDown tonight and get a bit more clarity on that. Uh, because, you know, Bianca was the Raw Women's Champion. Both her and Io were on Raw where this match got set up. 
they then both got drafted to SmackDown and Rhea got drafted to Raw. So is Rhea the Raw Women's Champion? Or is Bianca the, still the Raw Women's Champion? Like we we still need to get clarity on that. Maybe we do that at Backlash, maybe we do that even before so, and at SmackDown. But anyway, Bianca Belair versus EO Sky. Oh, and I want EO to win so bad. I like no, I thought Bianca should have lost to Bailey when they were doing that stuff. I thought Bianca should have lost to Asuka and Mania. Like, I like Bianca. I'm not, I am a Bianca fan. I think she has had great matches through her run. I'm just, I just feel like uh, there's better, like, she doesn't need a belt as much as other people. I feel like, damn it, Matt, like, ba imagine how, like, damage control, everyone was hyped when they debuted. And then they had Bailey lose to Bianca for like three months in a row. And they had Dakota and Neo just like win the tag titles and defend them like twice in six months on TV, you know. So that's why I'm kind of like, it depends on what they are doing with damage control. If they, they've kind of, what the story telling is kind of, Bailey's trying to keep Dakota and Neo happy, you know, she, she gave up her spot with Theo, which allowed Theo to become number one contender, you know, her and Dakota picked up a win over the women's tag champions on Raw. So like, are they going to, like split them up or are they kind of just shit or are they going to keep them together like i don't know if you like maybe they have bailey accidentally cost the own that starts to build a tension between the group so like yeah i'd love to see your sky get one but i just think bianca belair is going to retain and possibly build her like her versus charlotte or something at like summer slam because you know she She's already beaten Bailey. She's beaten Becky. She beat Sasha uh, like a many a couple of years ago. I feel like now the only big match for her out of four horsewomen left is that Charlotte match. So I feel like that could be the direction they go. But um, as much as I'd like CEO get to win and maybe feud with damage control over the belt after a split, I I just think Bianca will get the win here. Um. And now let's move on to the other women's championship match, which is Rhea Ripley defending against Zelina Vega. Um, happy to see Zelina get this spot. She hasn't really had big singles matches in WWE. Before um, she did win Queen of the Ring, but um, yeah, uh, happy to see Z uh, Zelina get a, you know a title shot. She has. She's a great wrestler. She hasn't really had that many opportunities to show. Like in WWE, she's mostly kind of been a valet. You know. First she was with Andrade, then with uh, Legato, now with the LWO. But she is starting to kind of show what she can do in ring. So I think this will be a good match against Rhea Ripley, especially, you know, look at both women and their styles. I feel like stylistic, stylistically, they match up well. Uh, but I do not see Rhea Ripley dropping the belt, especially, you know, we already talked about how Bianca and Io are over on SmackDown, Rhea's on Raw. Selena is also on SmackDown, so I don't see them doing a situation again where they um have both women's championships on SmackDown. And two, Rhea only won the belt at Romania. This will be her like first defense. It's too early to take the belt off her. Um so yeah, uh, as much as I like Selena Vega, it's got Rhea Ripley win written all over it. Um and yeah, like Rhea's got this in the bag. Um now let's move on to three possibilities for the match that can main event the show. Um, we're going to start with Cody Rhodes versus Brock Lesnar. And I'm actually going to go with Brock Lesnar here. One, do you see Brock Lesnar taking the crossroads? Because I don't. Um, and yeah, I feel like we're going with this adversity story for Cody. I feel like he lost to Roman. I feel like they're going to have him lose here against Brock. Maybe have him lose in the tournament to the New World Championship and Night Champion. Maybe have him in and lose money in the bank. You know. Like, I feel like there's a lot you could do with this Cody Rhodes adversity story. Which it looks like they're telling. You know, he's going through hard times. Like Dusty Rhodes. These are his hard times. And I know people say, oh, well, what about, you know, the stuff before he left when he started us. Then having to leave and all this. This is adversity and the injury. But... Like, I know, I feel like this is, you know, since comeback, Cody's won every match up until WrestleMania. So, so I've, I don't see this as, like, I'm not fully against this, like a lot of people seem to be. 
you know, I did kind of say in my predictions I wanted Roman to win because I thought I was more invested in the bloodline bloodline story and seeing how that plays out, which, you know, we haven't really got a lot of progress in, so maybe putting the belt on Cody, in hindsight, might have been the right decision. But we'll have to wait and see how this Cody stuff plays out, how the bloodline stuff plays out. I think it's too early to make that judgment call. Um, but yeah, like, I think Brock and Cody could be a good match, but, like... I imagine that this match starts, Brock catches Cody straight away, F5, picks him up, another F5, 1, 2, 3, gets to win. Um, yeah, I don't know, I just, I don't see Cody getting to win here. I think this would be Brock Lesnar. Maybe it's a, like, screwy finish that sets up a rematch at Night of Champions in Saudi. But, yeah, I'm going with Brock. I, I don't know why, I just got, I just, I, I just don't see Cody winning here. Maybe I'm wrong. But, uh, yeah, I'm going with the beast Brock Lesnar to get the win over Cody Rhodes. Moving on then, Matt Riddle, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn versus the Bloodline. Again, this is what I mean when there hasn't been a lot of progress in the Bloodline story. We're still doing the Sami and Kevin Owens stuff with the Bloodline. Um, you know, which peaked our WrestleMania in that great main event with Sami and Kevin won the belt. It felt like that was the natural conclusion. But well, we've had to drag things out a bit here. Um, no, luckily... Mitt Riddle, Owens and Sammy all went to Raw, whereas the Usos and Solo alongside Roman went to SmackDown. So, uh, so yeah, this feels like this will be the blow up of that part of the Bloodline feud. Of course, we've seen tension rising in the Bloodline. You know, it seems like since WrestleMania, Roman's just getting more annoyed and annoyed at the Usos, which I think will continue to happen here because I think. The babyface team of Riddle, Owens and Sammy will pick up the win. Maybe Pin and Jimmy or Jay. I don't see Solo being the one to take the fall. I feel like do, Bloodline will lose here. Um, and yeah, the Usos will take the fall here. Which will continue Roman Reigns' uh, like, annoyance towards the Usos. And kind of continue that like tension, that split that they have. You know like. We seen was it last week on Raw during the tag title match or SmackDown sorry in the tag title match that uh, while you guys were in the ring, uh, Heyman gets a call from Roman and tells Solo, "All right, tonight's tonight. Let's finish the job." Uh, and of course, then Riddle interfered. Was he going to help them take the tag titles back? Was he going to attack the Usos? Like the yeah, I feel like we're starting to heat things up now with the bloodline itself. Um, and yeah, like with Night Champions coming up in Saudi Arabia, yeah, Roman's probably going to be there. He's advertised for Money in the Bank, so he's probably going to be there. Then after that, we have SmackDown. You know, or we have SummerSlam. Sorry, not SmackDown. So there's three pay per views where in a row where you can probably expect Roman to be there. You know, he's probably going to be in Saudi. He's definitely going to be at SummerSlam, and he's advertised for Money in the Bank now. So like, I feel like we we'll things are going to start picking up with the Bloodline angle. Um, which I am excited to see how all that plays out and where things go. And I feel like that starts with them taking the loss here. And now on to the last match. Match I can probably one of the matches I see main eventing and as it's been rumoured that internally they're thinking about a main eventing. Bad Bunny versus Damian Priest. And you know, I feel like this will be a fun match. I feel like, you know, it's a San Juan street fight. It's gonna be fun, it's gonna be, you know, it's not gonna be a technical masterclass you know it's going to be kind of a bra kind of protect bad bunny since he you know he is not a, like a wrestler he's a music performer um i feel like this is going to be a fun matchup with a lot of like weapons and stuff you know we've seen bad bunny get put through a announce table in the bill we've seen him attack priest with the kendo stick um and yeah you know i feel like this will be a fun match expect the judgment day to get involved inspect the LWO to get involved and I feel like it's going to end with like the LWO helping Bad Bunny pick up the win in Puerto Rico um, so, yeah so um, not really much else to say there except expecting it to be fun you know Bad Bunny has looked good in his previous outings in the WWE ring um, and you know them Priest is a solid worker as well you know he's a good person to be in there and help carry Bad Bunny through and in a street fight, you know, like you have the weapons and stuff where you can help, you know, kind of protect and 
now expect like a five star Mac classic. But uh, yeah, it uh, should be, a, like I said, should be a fun show. Not really on paper that I'm super excited about and super need to see. But uh, yeah, when you look at it, the card and kind of break it down. There is a lot of good stuff in there and a lot of stuff that can be really good. So yeah, excited to see how this plays out and where things go from here. Because, you know, this is the last pay view before the draft comes into effect. You know, from Raw, you know, the brand split. And the like rosters to have and then draft take full effect. So this kind of feels like the reset point. You know, we're kind of finishing off things that happened up to WrestleMania. And then, you know, once Raw happens, we've hit reset. We go again and start doing new things. Um, so, yeah, it's like you need to see how things go and where things go. Heading out of Backlash. But uh, yeah, let me know in the comment section below what you think your predictions and how things are expected to go. Are you excited? Also, leave a like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.